Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have some additional limitations and also we're going to talk about some of the other functions as well. Notice we are now pretty familiar with the, the inverse sine, the inverse cosine functions. If we have the sine of theta equal x, then we know that the inverse sine of x has to be limited between minus 90 and plus 90 degrees. So it is good for this region of the angle. And the angles from minus 90 to plus 90 are associated with the inverse sine function. Also notice that the value of x cannot be any smaller than negative 1 and not any bigger than 1. It can be equal to negative 1 and 1 and anything in between, but nothing else. For the cosine, notice that the angles associated with the inverse cosine go from 0 to 180 degrees or from 0 to pi. And also notice that the values for x are also limited from minus 1 to 1, anything in between, but nothing bigger than 1 and nothing smaller than negative 1. When we take a look at the inverse tangents, notice that the inverse tangents have the same region of angle associated with the inverse tangent as the sine does, and the inverse cosine has the same angle region associated with the inverse cosine function, uh, inverse cotangent function. This should be a cotangent, not a cosine cotangent function, um, and notice that the range of angles is the same as the cosine. Notice that the values for x can be anywhere from minus infinity to infinity, not including, of course, infinity, and the same for the tangent, negative infinity to infinity. So any number you can pick, plug it into the inverse cotangent or plug it into the inverse tangent, and you'll get an associated angle with that. When we take a look at the cosecant and the secant, notice that for the cosecant, the range of values for the angle is from 0 to 90, and from 180 to 270, although they tend to express it in terms of negative angles. So negative 90 to negative 180, or negative pi, one, negative pi over 2 to negative pi. The same for the secant, the range of angles are from 0 to 90, or from 0 to pi over 2, and from negative pi over 2 to negative pi, or negative 90 to negative 180. The limits for the values for x with the secant and the cosecant, notice that it needs to be greater than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to negative 1. Same for the secant. And notice that it's almost in reverse to what we are allowed to use for sine and cosine, except the overlap is the value of 1 and the value of negative 1. But for the other values, the secant and cosecant, x needs to be bigger than 1 or smaller than negative 1 uh, for both functions. And so you can see that it's essentially almost the opposite, uh, opposite numbers than we use for the sine and the cosine. So it's probably a good idea to take a good look at this and understand when we're dealing with inverse uh, trigonometric functions that there's certain angle ranges that are associated with each of the functions and certain limitations placed on the value we can plug in to the inverse function. Otherwise, it'll be undefined. And that is how it's done.